and then make make ma 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 and then make tribe welcome to HGDC HG designs crochet I'm Heather and I'm 29 from the United Kingdom and this channel of mine is documenting my journey as a crochet designer making moments and memories if you're brand new hi hello and welcome to the tribe and if you're returning thank you for coming back and spending this time with me um, so last vlog which came out last week. Um, I spoke about the granny square crochet curtain that I wanted to make. Um, so that was just a little impromptu chat. I was just gonna do a little bit of vloggy stuff. Um, somebody commented saying, I want to see more of you crocheting. So I was just gonna do a really little chunk of that and put it in, but I was in a really chatty mood so I ended up chatting to you all and decided I was making a crochet curtain if you haven't seen it go back and see it um, and that came about because I'm loving loving my granny squares and in particular my two round granny squares of which I have some here these are just delicious I love everything about them and they're so cute and so dainty and I wanted to make something for my bedroom and I was going to make a blanket and I've not ruled that out spoiler alert blankets are coming back into my life but we will get back onto that let's not digress but I had always had this image in my head of a curtain and so I decided to do a two round granny square curtain um, yeah there's a lot of work and so I merrily chatted away to you all and I was like I'm doing it I'm doing it I see it I'm just gonna do it and I broke my own rule I jumped straight into that project I didn't even uh, work out how much yarn I would need or take any measurements or anything but I think there's a reason there's a very good reason why I didn't do that because had I have measured that window and worked out how many of these squares I needed probably would have talked myself down from the um, little chat that I had and wouldn't be making the curtain. As it is, I jumped in and I took vlog footage the whole way along. So I jumped in and made the centres. I made a stack of centres and then I did the measurements and I calculated on my phone that I'm going to need 525 squares do you know how many ends that is oh because uh, <coughs> excuse me every center has two ends as I'm going to do the continuous join as you go there'll be no ends on the joining color there'll just be two on the entire project if I did it in one panel but the centers 525 centers means 1050 ends and that's just oh, that's a lot and so had I worked that out I would have just I wouldn't have carried on with that project I wouldn't have so I'm glad that I just jumped in because now I have I do feel committed um, and so as I said I've took more vlog footage as I've gone along some of which I took earlier today um, so I'm just going to insert that in as I go along so that you can see the square journey. Hey tribe, it is Saturday 24th of August, it's about 8am. Every time I do a little vlog now I'm going to try and put the time and date in so you know where I'm at. I'm in my bedroom tribe, um, 
Sorry about all the morning lights. That's the side that the sun comes, comes up on. Um, but I said in yesterday's vlog, um, crochet chat that ended in curtains, that I wanted to make a two round granny square curtain. And I've made that tiny little bit and I've just propped it up to see what it's gonna look like. And yeah, I am massively, oh, look at it. It looks great. Um, because I was downstairs just a moment ago and I was talking myself out of it, thinking mm, it's gonna look rubbish. Um, and I appreciate if I'd have put the blind down, you could see a bit better. But let me back up. Imagine the two round granny squares the whole way along and down. It's going to overlap the window ledge by two inch, which is one square, and same to the window ledge by one square. And I'm going to make some sort of tab top for it. Just zoom in. So it'll be hanging off a tab top. Oh, so I'm really excited. Um, I just thought I'd show you what it looks like. It is still 24th of August, Monday morning. Monday? Definitely not Monday. Saturday morning. And one other thing I've just pulled out to show you is yellow yarn. I want some of these centres to be yellow for the curtain in my bedroom. Um, so I've gone with this sort of baby pastel yellow and this one is a shade darker it's from the calf kidston kit that i've had that i've never used um and it doesn't actually have a color on it and then i've gone with this my rowan pure wool dk um shade 32 lot 4123 um and i'm going to put some of those centers in with this um and i think that's gonna look really really pretty so as i am going away now for the weekend um by the time you see this i'll already be back but i am away for the weekend and so i'm gonna quickly sit and make 10 or so centers of each color um so that i can put all of these centers into a bag and i can sit there pull them out and do join as you go and then I'm going to have to be really disciplined and maybe after two rows sit and sew in the centres, um, the weave that ends in rather. So I'm not feeling daunted by it though because that's just two, two ends per square. And on a project this size, that isn't that many ends. I mean, if I hadn't done the continuous join as you go, I'd have another two for this pink, which would be four per square. So I've already halved the amount of ends. Um, so I think discipline is the way forward. As long as I keep on top of these ends, it won't be too daunting. Um, so right now, I'm gonna leave these here. I'm loving the brown, the white, and those colors. It just looks really nice. And also, I'm on the landing right now and I never realized how good the light is. So I'm gonna be taking some pictures up here for defo. Right then, shower time, more centers. I will, when I'm next sat in my little corner, um, my crochet station as it's now turned into, I will show you the pile of centers I've also amassed. So for now, I'm gonna love ya and I'm gonna leave ya.
Okay, tribe, it is Saturday the 31st of August and it is about four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I'm just enjoying this spot of sunshine in my living room and I am working on the curtain. Um, I haven't vlogged as much of this as I thought I would. So this is a good time as any to give you a little update. Um, so I have made, well I've put together two rows. I've just finished putting together the second row. Um, it's 25 squares along. And so that you can see the whole thing, I've folded it in a zigzag. Um, and as you can see, I've got the ends to do. So I've paused on this row and I am going to sew the ends in before I continue. Otherwise, this project at this size is going to be an absolute beast. Um, so I really need to keep up with the ends as I go along. Um, one other thing I haven't shown you is the bag of centers. Um, so I have been making all of the centers and then placing them in here. And there's even more of them on the floor. Now I'm using all of this yarn that you can see here and I worked out that I need 525 centers. Um, now I usually work out how many squares I need and whatnot and I've started making my squares in rounds. I just jumped into this pattern. Had I thought about it, I wouldn't have used a 3.5 mil hook that I'm using. I'd have used a five mil hook. And, um, but I'd already jumped in and had about a hundred centers before I thought of using the larger hook. Um, but that's okay. I'm gonna carry on with the smaller hook. It just means that these squares are a little bit tighter than they would have been had I used a five mil. Um, but that's fine, there's no problem. Each square is two inches and that works out really well because um, my window is an even number across and down and so this these squares fit perfectly. Um, had I used a bigger hook, it might not have fitted as well so everything has a reason why it happens. Um, I didn't work out the amount of squares until I was part way through and so I was starting by just pulling out a ball of yarn and then making say 10 centres and putting them all in. Um, I've since worked out that I need something like 17 of each colour but I'm not going to lie I do get bored of churning out just the centres so I've made a dent and the, the last count I had 176 and since then I've churned out even more. So I'm going to guess that there's over 200, and, but there must be at least 250 there, I think. So I'm near halfway with the centres. Um, and so what I've been doing is I have set out sort of um, a little panel here of the squares, making sure that I pick out one of each colour. Now I've used about 30 different colours for the centres and um, when it comes to putting the row together I found that it's best if I just pick out one of each colour like I'm doing here, line them up um, and then, have I got this colour? Nope, I need a glittery pink and then once I've got, I've got that one, once I've got them all there I then, and I know there's a few more missing, this baby yellow is not been included. Um, what else? Got that one. Um, some of them, because I'm using scraps, there isn't going to be enough to make 17 of them, and so they're just going to have to be very loosely spread out. But that's fine. I've created a pile like this and then spread this out flat. I'd lay it out the full width, the full 25 and then I have just started lining them up like this. Now you know I like it to look randomly placed where in actual fact it's very carefully thought out because I don't want the colours touching. So 
I've found that if I do this, I can crochet a lot quicker because the thought is taken out of the process. So I will just line them up like this and then I will start adding them in um, rather than pausing at the end of each one to pick out a colour. This works a lot, lot quicker. Um, so that's my system at the moment. Um, this project, I try to make all of my projects very portable. This project at the moment isn't all that portable. Well, it is and it isn't. Because I've done the full 25 squares along, I don't feel that it's necessarily very portable because that's a lot to carry around. Once I've got, say, 10 rows on that, that's gonna be quite a big project. So I might, well, I definitely will at some point split it into panels. So I'll either keep doing, I might um, say do six rows on this and then start another panel, or I might sort of do 15 squares and make a, a rectangle panel to be added in. Um, but we'll see how I get on because, I mean, it doesn't weigh an awful lot right now. I've probably used, I think I've used an entire 50 gram ball to put two rows together. I think, again, I didn't use a full ball. I'm sure I have partially used it and I've gone in. So I'm going to weigh this and weigh the centres and work out how much joining colour I've used. Also because I think I'm going to have to go and buy some more of this, which... I'm not that fussed about because it's going into a designated um, a designated project. So I will buy the amount that I need and then maybe two more balls just to keep in my stash because this has glitter in it, which the sun is blaring out. You can see how gorgeous it is. Um, so I'd like to keep some in my stash. So my next step is to sew in these ends. Now, each square's got two ends and there are 50 squares on here. So that's 100 ends at the end of row two. Um, a little bit, a part of me is a bit like, mm, I don't wanna sew the ends in, but I just know that if I just don't think about it, because if I sit and think, oh, that's a lot of ends, oh, I don't really wanna do it, it's not gonna get done. So the best thing to do is just to make it into a bit of a game and what I like to do is put on, I'll find like a YouTube video that's like 15 minutes and I will sit and sew the ends in till the end of that 15 minutes um, and see how far I've got and then I might crochet on another project or I will ring my grandma and I will say like sort of keep an eye on the, on the time that I'm on the phone and I say to my grandma who likes to chat my ear off I'll say I'm only speaking for like half hour and then an hour and a half later, you know, I've completed all the ends and added in the next three rows because she's still gas bagging. So I just tried to make the ends more of an enjoyable project and just see it as completing each row means that I'm closer to getting this hung up, which is what I'm really looking forward to. Um, in terms of hanging it up, I want to do tab tops. So I need, to, I do need to remember to get extra of this for the tabs as well. Though I was thinking I could use some of that yarn to make the tabs and have the tabs all different colours. Um, I do like the sound of that and it means that I'd use more of my stash but then I also think it would look cute finished in that. Um, I've seen another curtain, granny square curtain, that one of my... Um, subscribers very kindly sent me on Facebook and it looks amazing and what they've done is they've sewn the squares together and then to put it onto the pole what they've done is every second square they have left um, they've only sewn it along these joins and not the sides and then the pole has slotted behind there in front of this one behind that one in front of that one behind that one and that's how they've put it on and it does look really, really good, but I just think when I try and open it, it's gonna scrunch up too much and be too bulky. Whereas if I've got tabs, the the um, curtain can really fold in on itself rather than having it all bunched up like this every second, every second row, because it would then do 
be something like that and I, I don't want that I just want it to be able to just move itself um, and sit a bit flatter so I'm gonna carry on with my tab idea because let's be honest I sleep with no curtains no blackout blind and this in all likelihood is going to stay open so I can see maybe in the winter that I will pull it across just for a bit more privacy I mean I've got like a is it a voile a voile sort of curtain um that gives me a little bit of privacy and then this over it as well and I am going to sort out black outlines I can actually put it up and down but on all honesty this is probably just going to stay open so let's get the end sewn in and then I'll be able to show you um, but I, I do really think that the colours are working really well um, I've tried to go with quite a light colour base and so this colour here um, it's this purple that's a style craft purple I think it's grape I am only going to put the odd one in so I'm probably not going to put it in on this row um, because it isn't on the second row it's just there but it isn't on the second row and I'm probably going to not put it in for like the next two or three rows sorry that's really glinting so that I can really spread out how often it's included and to compensate because because there should be an even amount of each one but uh, there's less of that there's a very limited amount of that um, a few of those about six of those in total the neutrals will be used more frequently um, and the baby pink so I think there's something like 30 of each of those going in so each row will have multiple of these on it most likely um, but I like the thought of that that was intentional I've duplicated those colours because I want it to be quite neutral the only thing is then because I don't want this within sort of two squares either side I've just got to be very careful when I'm spreading it out so that is why I am um, picking them out before as I go along laying it out and just seeing how the effect looks because so if you can see it's there and it's there um, so I would either need to put it here here or not put it in at all um, and I'm, I'm tempted to say that I wouldn't put it in on this section it would go more here where it isn't so that, that I don't want there to be a big clump of it uh, I want it to be nicely interspersed so leave that with me um, I'm going to sew those ends in I'm loving this sunshine spot um, the sunshine really makes me happy I do suffer with SAD seasonal affectionate disorder um, in the winter and when I find little spots like this during the day I, I, I just sit in it so if you look around here the sun is very it is because it's coming through the big window which I'm not going to show you because it will blind you but there's a big window just up here um, and yeah I just sit in this spot and really enjoy the sunshine and the heat <sighs> um, for a couple of hours and it's beautiful so I'm going to put something well I'm watching Volume Vine at the moment on my Mac oh the sun's gone in a little bit um, let me just show you that's where my big window is and that's my beautiful sunflowers that were delivered for me Oh, I just love them so much. I feel so spoiled and looked after. Um, so yeah, I'm going to carry on watching Volume Fine. And so in the end, actually, that's not true. I need to get on with a DIY project, which I'm also vlogging about. Um, so I'm going to do that now. 
and then I will sew in the end when I nip out later. I've got some car time coming up, I'll be the passenger, so I'll be able to sew in the end on that um, and then add in the next row. The only thing I've not really worked out is a system of if I spread these out and decide that I want them to go like this, how I can then pack them so that I can... Oh, I've just had a brilliant idea. So I want to be able to keep them in the order. So maybe if I get a pen or a pencil, I've got a pen here and I, let's try and do this one handed, stack them like this. You have to get a pencil, I think. Yes, that works really well. Then that way, bingo! I have a portable project. I'm going to get a pencil or a paintbrush. I've got some long thin paintbrushes, and I'm going to stack them on like that, starting from this end where I'm going to be starting the next row. And then if I lay them all out and then stack them on a pen, pencil, paintbrush, and find something just to stop at the ends with that means that I can put that in my project bag and I can take off the next one and I can, I'm portable. Boom. Yes. And that means I don't need to cut it up into sm smaller panels or separate it off into smaller panels to make on it because what I will do is I'll keep going till this gets to maybe six or eight, we'll see how heavy it is, bulky it is. And then I'll just, again, set out the next row put them on my little gizmo and then rather than join it on that I just join them as I go um, or will I because then thinking about that when it comes to separating it what I'll have to do is start from it would have to be like this so say these are all individual rows I would have to start here and when it comes to the last row I'd need to set it all out and then I would join onto this because I need to if I go along if I was to start from the top and work my way down on the next rows I wouldn't be able to join onto this so what I need to do is start a completely new panel and then when I get to the last row turn the entire panel around and attach it to this that's okay, I can work with that. This is still portable. Cool. Okay, so this was going to be a two minute. This is where I'm up to and now it's 18 minutes. So I'm going to I'm going to crack on with my project and as soon as I can get these ends sewn in and then I'll check in and give you another update of the curtain. Okay. Laters, laters, laters. So it's been a week and a couple of days since I decided I was making the curtain. Obviously, as you've seen from the footage, the vlog footage, I've made quite a bit of progress and I've got it here to show you now. Um, and then I'm just going to do a recap just to bring together all that vlog footage that you've been seeing or might see after this. Um, I started the curtain and it is long. Now, I'm not going to be able to get it all in, so we'll just hold it up like this. Um, so far, I've completed row two, and all of the ends have been sewn in. I just need to snip those few off. Um, I was actually sewing them in, in a, whilst on a car journey, and then quickly sewed them all in, packed everything up, and forgot to snip those last three. But they are ready to be snipped. So that means the first 50, because this is 25, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. This is twenty-five squares wide. Oh, there you go. And I've done two rows, so there's fifty squares, and I've sewn in the ends on them all. As I've already stated, if I don't sew the ends in on this as I go along, they won't get sewn in because it's mammoth. That is a huge amount of squares, huge. But 
I've done 50 squares and there's going to be 525 in the project. So that's already quite a dent that I've done, I feel. Um, I'm really pleased with it. It looks really good. As ever, I have spaced out the centres so that they are not too close in proximity. Um, I like my granny squares to look casually put together and as you know, I spend quite a bit of time picking out the order that they're going to be um, joined. So I have made a big stack of centres which are in here. Now I need 525 and I've done this many. I haven't, I'm not sure, there's over 200 and something. And you know what? I'll count them right now and then I'll be right back. 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 4, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 148, 147 in there plus the 50 I've got here that's 207 centres so I'm not even halfway and what I've been doing is if I am going on a little trip or you know just out and about for 10 minutes I just take my crochet with me on the off chance that I might get five minutes to make some centres um, I have been, I worked out, as I've said before, there's about 30 colours, which meant I needed something like 17 of each, um, but there isn't, some of them I've just got very small scrap amounts, and that purple I don't want to feature too heavily, because I don't want this to be very dark, and so some of them I'm going to do more of, and there's two colours in particular, the baby pink, and then a neutral colour that there's going to be about 30 of each of these colours. Um, so yeah, progress is good so far. Um, I've also worked out how I'm going to take an entire row with me because as soon as the row is set out, I can take them off and I can add a huge amount really, really quickly. Um, and also I'm going to add in, this is not the only project I've worked on in the last week. Um, if you've watched the last vlog, you'll know that there are three Granny Square projects on the go. A mystery one, which I'm still not going to announce, um, Stella 2, and this. Stella 2 is almost done, so today is the 31st of August, and tomorrow the 1st of September. Once I've finished church and I've um, started my roast dinner, my chicken's already seasoned, y'all, um, and just digress a little bit. Yeah, I'm pretty much vegan, but I just really fancied a roast dinner. So anyway, um, after I'm back and I've set off my roast dinner of parsnips and carrot and broccoli, and I'm gonna have um, chicken and roast potato and mashed potato and all the potato, and I might even make yorkie pods. Oh, once all that's got going, I am going to sew the lining in Stella 2 and I have been recording tutorials and step by step uh, taking photos as I go along. So I have taken photos of um, how to do the continuous join as you go and I've also recorded that. I'm also going to record a tutorial of how to make a granny square and I'm also going to record the join as you go method as well as the continuous join as you go so that once Stella is released, anybody that wants to learn to crochet or can crochet but just needs some guidance, it will all be there for you to make the granny squares. And also that this continuous join as you go is a great method because it reduces the ends. And anything that does that is a winner in my book. Um, so I'm gonna do the lining as well. 
and I've got this really 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 nice pale pink um, poly polyester and I'm gonna sew the lining and I'm gonna take pictures and I'm gonna record it so that once Stella comes out you can see how I line my bags um, I basically made mine up I watched the zines and Rogers um, tutorial on YouTube I looked at a few blogs and I just used some of my sewing experience um, to put it together uh, it's very it's very easy to do it's nothing to stress about um, and then that means that once Stella 2 is done all I need to do is the photographs and the pattern will be ready for you all and because it's such a small little bag I'm not going to get it tested because there's no size variations all you need to do is make your granny squares to the size that I have and even if they're not even if you decide to make a bigger one it just means that your lining needs to be a bit bigger um, and then you're gonna line it you don't even have to line it if you don't want to and then you'll have a bag so I am gonna get that finished for you all tomorrow um, and then I'm gonna carry on taking vlog footage of my curtain over the next week um, so that you can see how it's getting on I probably won't release another vlog on the curtain for about a fortnight now um, otherwise all you're going to see in the next vlog is I've joined row 3, I've joined row 4 and that's not really that interesting for you um, so I will vlog me working on it as I work on it and then in maybe in a fort fortnight time if I've made a decent amount of progress say I've hit like 8 rows then I'll definitely do a vlog, put it all together and show you um, the next vlog will probably be all about Stella and my mystery project so although normally I try and be a monogamous project a monogamous crocheter, I work on one project it's good that I've got a few on the go and I've also got another jumper cardigan that I want to do <sighs> I'm thinking of doing some patterns that I've already got so um, other indie, indie designers I'm thinking of making some of their patterns just to use up some of my stash um, because one of the other things I'm doing and which I've been vlogging about to show you is I'm rearranging my yarn space um, so I have an entire room, craft room for HDDC and I don't really use it very much it's not laid out in a good format I prefer to vlog here in my little happy cosy corner with my lights and my books my comfy sofa and my beautiful wallpaper and so that room is really just a storage room so I um, working on making it more of a functioning usable room um, so I want upstairs to be more usable and I want my yarn to be displayed in a much better way be more easily accessible because I've got all of the plastic tubs I can never be bothered now to unstack them to get into them um, I just want to be able to see more at a glance what I've got um, and I want to use some of the yarn up that's just sat there languishing. Um, I really, really, really want to do more four ply projects. So, but I'm on a little bit of a yarn ban. I'm trying not to add to the stash. I really want to take a lot out of it. So making projects like this kind of help, but kind of don't because I am using stuff. But come on guys. That's not a lot of yarn um, and I'm probably going to buy more yarn to join this so I don't mind having lots of colours because when it comes to my granny squares I like them to be colourful like this so I'm happy to have lots of random one balls of DK yarn for these sorts of projects um, I want to get more sweater, sweater quantity of sweater quantities of yarn to make jumpers, cardigans and I want that to be four ply but I've made the bargain with myself that I am not going to buy more yarn until one I've used up a good 
considerable chunk of that and also that I want the money that I buy yarn to have already come from HGDC so selling the pattern for Stella 2, for Pinnacle, for Enamoured, for Promise, my granny square jumper. I want the money to come from that and I want it to be more um, considered purchases. I don't want to just buy random yarn for the sake of it. Um, so I do have a little bit of stash to use up, a little bit, a lot. Um, I'd like I like the thought of my stash being much more manageable. Um, so in my head, I kind of see like having a shelf of all the different colours of DK, like one one random ball, so that when I do projects like this, I can dip in. Um, then I will, when I have a project in mind, I will then go out and buy the joining colour in bulk. Um, because I should be able to calculate how much I'll need and then I want to then have I want to buy four ply for projects um, there's a lot of tops that I want to make there's some other bag designs I've got in mind I really want to make like a bikini um, I'm hoping that next year 2020 I can go abroad um, on a holiday or a couple of holidays thinking hopefully that I'll get to go away for three weeks and I would love for a good considerable amount of my pro uh, outfits to be something that I've made um, you know a beach bag one or two bikinis um, a cover up a dress you know that would be amazing and then I could just mix in some of the store brought stuff that I already have yeah so to do that, I'm going to be selling these patterns. Um, the curtain pattern, I won't be selling, but I will possibly just put it together in a freebie and explain how I make the tabs if anybody then wants to do it, but um, and how I measured and how to work out how many squares you need for the window of your size. Um, and also, And also, if this looks good, there are two other windows in this house that need curtains. Um, my front door needs a curtain, which I would then line just because it's quite drafty in that part, in that hallway. And then the window in the hallway also needs a curtain. That one though, I envisage being more using a bigger hook, maybe a 5mm, and it being a lot more open work, um, not not as much a privacy one. And then, and then in my head I'm like, would the open work not be better in my bedroom, because there's a blackout blind there, and then this go in the um, hallway window, and then make, make, and then make, a matching door curtain but the thought of making a door curtain out of two round granny squares because it would have to be double this at least in length so that's like what 50 squares in length by maybe at least 20 if I do it by 10 that's what 500 20 is like a thousand oh. Let me get this one done and see how I feel about it. So yeah, that is my week in a nutshell. I have been furiously working on the mystery project, which is very close to being done. Um, and you'll see that hopefully next week. I've been working on Stella 2 and I will have that finished tomorrow. And then I've got a series of tutorials to come out on that, to go alongside the pattern. I hope you're all excited and that, that you all want to get a copy. Um, I'm thinking as well of, to tie in with that, doing a live vlog on YouTube, scheduling it, and then we can all sit and make um, squares to make a version of Stella. Um, I will be making my third, but that's okay because I intend to gift that to a friend for her Christmas. So 
um, if you all are on board for a crochet along, a make along for my pattern, then let me know because that is definitely something I'd love to arrange. Um, and then I've been working on my curtain and I just love it. I think it looks great. The colours are working really well together and it's going to look really good hung up. So yeah, I am going to set out the next row, put a few squares on and then by the time I've edited this vlog on my mark that's just there that you can't see, I might have time for a very quick bath and then it's going to be bedtime. So I am going to say goodnight to you now and that I will see you again next week. I'm loving getting these vlogs out weekly. Um, and I'm loving seeing the subscribe account go up. Welcome to the tribe, all of you. Welcome to the Granny Square Mania that is HGDC. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Okay. Peace.